Hi, everyone. I wanted to uh, take a second and uh, really, hopefully, be able to pass along some knowledge that we've gained uh, about the endocannabinoid system. And I really want to talk about that system and how it applies uh, to viruses, really, and what we're seeing right now with SARS uh, Corona 2. So, uh, real quick, who am I? Again, I guess I got to qualify who I am, but uh, you, best left to you. So, again, go to Google. Uh, if you go to Google and you put in chip Paul endocannabinoid, you're going to get about 397 results that have me in various and sundry speeches and things that I've done. But really, what I'm trying to illustrate there is I have a significant amount of expertise on the endocannabinoid system. I am you know, blessed to be able to help teach MDs and PhDs about this system. I'm also you know, equally blessed to be able to talk at universities about this system and also talk at expos and do a lot of training and things like that. So I know a fair bit about the endocannabinoid system. I've been studying it since 2014. Um, potentially, we were one of the first to come along and coin some terms about it, like the master regulatory system. Um, and then we also have patents around what we're doing in our company around modulating the endocannabinoid system. And then I also kind of wear another hat. It's an activist hat. And my wife and I have been deeply involved in the whole medical marijuana movement in Oklahoma. And I actually uh, authored our law here in Oklahoma, which it turns out is looking to be the most successful medical marijuana law in the country. So I'm very proud of that and very honored to have that privilege. But by no means was it not a we the people experience here in Oklahoma. It completely was, and it would have never happened without all the wonderful, wonderful people here in Oklahoma and our tremendous grassroots effort. But anyway, so that's kind of who I am. Um, but what I want to do is, and again, this is kind of a freebie giveaway, but I want to kind of educate you guys around this viral infection that's going on and really maybe a new way to kind of look at human function and potentially, you know, how we might go at these things in the future, maybe in a little different way than we are now. Um, so let's get into it. All right. So what happens to you during a viral infection? Well, first of all, I mean, and this is just logic, our bodies are under constant assault by viruses, by bacteria, by all kinds of foreign invaders, always, happening all the time, happening to me right now, happening to you while you're sitting there listening to this. As you touch your keyboard, there's probably all kinds of funk and goo that potentially could invade our bodies and attack us in a similar way that this virus is. Okay, so first, let's just get that baseline. Lots of goo out here. We somehow defend ourselves against 99.9% .9 of it, but some of it gets through, okay? So now let's sort of drill into this point a little bit more. This is just a research study here on the left, but it says new research breaks with existing knowledge about how our immune system works. Experiments at A. Harris University have shown that the body mobilizes a hitherto unknown defense against viruses and bacteria. This also explains why we do not constantly get ill despite the viruses around us. So again, what is this? How does this work inside of us? You know, what are these special resources, right? So give me some more, man. I want enough to fight off influenza and I want enough to fight off all of these viral bugs as they come at us, right? So let's understand this a little better. All right, so let's start at the beginning. If something invades your body, how do you defend against it? We all have this. We have to have. Again, we'd be you know, susceptible to 99% of the junk that we fight off. So the way that our bodies defend against a viral attack is with something called an immune response. And again, I just pulled this off Wikipedia, but it, you know, it's pretty basic. An immune response is, is any organism, it's really reaction and a defense against foreign invaders. So if something attacks us, how do we defend against us? It gets it. And that is our immune response. And it also, immune response also has to do with how we deal with trauma and pain and injury and repair those things and all that. But as to viruses, our first thing that happens is we throw up an immune defense. And again, it depends on what that virus is and how it sort of attacked us as to what that immune response will look like. But our immune system is our first level of defense against a virus. So again, let's explore this a little deeper. Well, what controls our immune system? <laughs> Turns out that our immune system 
is controlled by another system called the endocannabinoid system. Now, you're immediately going to go to the cannabis place. Don't go there. The endocannabinoid system is an internal system that we share with most life on the planet. And again, it's looking to be a very important system. And if you want to know more deeply about it, go at the end of this. There's a class. Go take the class. It's not expensive. And I'll teach you a whole bunch about the endocannabinoid system. And there'll be more and more classes as we develop. But the big thing that I want you to realize right here is that the endocannabinoid system sits in function above your immune, your immune response and regulates how it works. So now we have a virus attack us. We have our immune system. That's the first defense. But our immune system in the background is completely regulated by our endocannabinoid system, by our endocannabinoid system. Okay. All right. So how else does this work? And, it, it, and is there evidence here to, you know, indicate, I guess, that the endocannabinoid system is managing this process? Well, certainly there is. And again, please satisfy yourself to the amount of research, but there's copious amounts of research. Put in immune system and put in endocannabinoid and search NIH.gov, which is our nation's clearinghouse for research. You will see plenty and plenty of studies. But as you read those studies, again, you're going to see that the immune, uh, the immune system sits below and function the endocannabinoid system. And the endocannabinoid system controls the immune response. And it does this in a variety of ways, mainly neurological. But it also does it cellularly, too. All right, so what does that mean? What does that mean that this endocannabinoid system is, is regulating a particular aspect of our body? Well, again, in our world, we think the endocannabinoid system regulates our entire function as a human, but we're just talking about immune system right here. So what does that mean? Well, it means that we, we work kind of like our car, okay? And again, if we look at our vehicle, we understand that our vehicle has a computer in it, and that computer is always watching every single system in that vehicle. And it uses the electrical system or in mechanical systems in some cases in that vehicle to be able to balance those systems to perfect homeostasis. So again, at times, we may need more oil in our vehicle if we're trudging up a mountain or under times of stress. And certainly if it's raining, we need the windshield wipers, you know, and certainly if it's snowing, we need, you know, fluid in our windshield wiper, you know, thing, right? So we need all of these different resources in our vehicle. And at times those are a different mix, but generally we kind of have a general set of resources and then we have specific resources to do specific things. But anyway, we kind of work like a vehicle. So real quick under the endocannabinoid system, let me just explain your immune response as to trauma. Okay, so again, it works similar as the viral attack, but under trauma, let's say you don't like what old Chip is saying and you throw a rock at me, bam, it hits me in the head. So first thing I'm going to do is have a pain response and then a fight or flight reaction. Hopefully I'll run away from you. Uh, but anyway, so it's going to hit me. I'm going to have a pain response. Again, hypothalamus, hippocampus is going to interpret the extent of that injury then my hype using the endocannabinoid system and then my hypothalamus hippocampus is going to inflame an area around that injury using my endocannabinoid system and then my hypothalamus hippocampus is going to cue stem cells to go repair that area using my endocannabinoid system and then it's going to deflame that whole area using my endocannabinoid system Okay, so that is an example of how the endocannabinoid system is managing our immune response. With a virus, it happens a little different, but again, same idea. So we work kind of like our vehicle, and we have this major system that is managing all these minor and other major, really, subsystems, but there's subsystems under it. And our immune response, our immune system, is a subsystem under the endocannabinoid system. So let's talk a little bit further about this, about the endocannabinoid system and it really all your systems in your body. We don't really realize this, but this is an important new way to begin to think about human function. So under the endocannabinoid system, we have central nervous uh, systems and there are several of those, but two of those are something called dopamine and serotonin. 
And dopamine and serotonin are critical in how we drive our cognition and how we drive our mood, okay? So we need dopamine and serotonin to be able to even have cognitive thought and to be able to generate mood. So where do dopamine and serotonin come from? Yeah, it, I, it, it's funny. I ask this question in front of you know, really, really smart people all the time. And most of us, we just don't have a need to even think about this. But it's, we're not born with a big bucket of dopamine and serotonin and die with a big bucket. We have to make it. Our bodies are excellent at making dopamine and serotonin. But they have to have the resources, the precursors. And those precursors, it's not really that important, but those precursors for L-tryptophan and L-tyr, or uh, for L dopamine and serotonin are L-tryptophan and L-tyrosine, okay? So the point of this story is not L-tryptophan and L-tyrosine. It's if I put you in a box and I denied you foods that contain L-tryptophan and L-tyrosine, guess what? In a short amount of time, you're a depressed Parkinson's patient because you cannot make dopamine and serotonin. If I give you a tryptophan biscuit or a tyrosine biscuit or both of them, whoop, you come right back online because now you have the precursors to be able to break down to be able to build dopamine and serotonin, okay? That's a natural resource-driven system. We have to eat for the system to be able to break that, we we'll have key precursors, to be able to break down the precursors, to be able to build all these chemical mediators that run us. This is very logical, but we seem to have somehow lost this information, okay? So again, with this particular system, L-tryptophan and L-tyrosine, your endocannabinoid system is the same. It needs resources in order to do things. Your immune system is the same it needs resources to be able to do things. So let's get into this a little bit more in detail. So again, let's go back and look though, first, what happens during a viral infection? Well, again, now we've got a little bit of additional information. So now we can talk about this in a little bit different way. Our body's under constant assault all the time. Generally, we have enough resources in our immune system and our endocannabinoid system to be able to fight off things like bacteria and viruses and, and to be able to deal with internal things like traumas and, and things like that. So generally, we kind of have enough resources. I don't think we have enough resources. We're breaking, but you know, again, you get the idea. All right, so what happens during a viral infection? Our vehicles are under stress, right? So again, if I'm gonna go take my car and drive up a mountain road, I'm definitely going to check the oil and I might even put in a heavier oil, you know, cause I know that my engine is going to be under stress. It might be raining and snowing. So I'm going to check my windshield wipers. And I'm going to make sure that I got all the stuff that I need to deal with that situation because it's not a normal situation. So guess what? Our bodies are the same. So we potentially have the stuff that we need to deal with most normal situations but we potentially don't have the stuff that we need to deal with something like this viral attack, like a SARS Corona 2 or coronavirus, a SARS CoV 2 virus attack. So, again, how do we fix that? How do we fix that? Well, first of all, we really have to understand kind of the mechanisms of this virus. So, again, how is it coming at us and what resources can we throw at it to fight it off? And it's just a resource issue. It's just a bolstering of our immune system issue. There are no cures for a virus. It's, you're not cured of a bacterial infection. You can't be cured of a viral infection. There's viruses everywhere. They attack us all the time. You can't be cured. A vaccine is something where they just give you the virus and then you build antibodies in your immune system. And then your immune system has the goodies to be able to fight it off next time. So that's a strategy of vaccines. But again, we kind of know potentially, you know, someone else is building those for us. And that's a little scary. So what can we do that we can control? That's the interesting thing. How can you help yourself at home? Well, first of all, you got to understand what we're really talking about. But are there resources that we could provide to our endocannabinoid system and our immune system to be able to fight off this virus better? Well, yes, absolutely there are. So let's just real quick talk about those. 
So first of all, you have to understand how the virus works. And so this virus likes to enter us through our neurology, our neurological system, through an ACE, A-C-E, neuroreceptor, okay? So that's how he gets in us. Then once he's in us, what he likes to do is disrupt our ability to bind oxygen to red blood cells. So what happens is we can't get oxygen and we end up uh, dying of hypoxia, right? So just like if you're on the top of a mountain, you can breathe, but you can't get any oxygen, a similar thing happens with this virus. So now we know those things. So can we throw resources at our immune system to help with this? Yes, absolutely. So again, you can, this is all, everything that I'm telling you, again, please go back through that you have little resource references, please feel free to check those. Um, if you look at SARS-Corona uh, or SARS-CoV-2, it invades, as I said, at the ACE neuroreceptor. We can block that guy. Guess what licorice does as an herb? Licorice has resources that block the ACE neuroreceptor, and that is an effective strategy against sars Corona. And again, you can read that in the Nature article that's uh, cited there. And it is a Nature article, which is a big mainstream publication. Um, what else can we do? Again, can we get in the process of how this virus is disrupting our ability to bind oxygen to red blood cells? Yes, absolutely we can. And that is exactly what hydroxychloroquine does, or chloroquine, or quinine. So they all assist our body with being able to build hemoglobin or bind oxygen to red blood cells to be able to oxygenate our body. So again, we've heard a lot about HCQ and CQ therapies, but this is why they work. And again, they're a therapy to boost our immune system. And the biggest thing that I want you guys to take away from all of this is again, this is a new way to look at human function. It really is, okay? A virus or bacteria invades us, we respond with our immune response, you know, just in a very predictable way. Our immune response is governed and regulated by this thing called the endocannabinoid system. If we don't have the resources in this system, we'll get sick and potentially we'll die. If we do have the resources in these systems, we fight off the virus. And it literally is that simple. It is that simple and that basic. Why we try to complicate it with all these other stuff and make it magical and mystical and pharma land. And the only way that you can understand this stuff is if you've been to eight different universities. No, again, you just need resources. You provide your body with resources, it gets better. It defends itself. It's that easy, folks. And again, please validate me. No holes in my theory, um, but it's looking to me to be that way. And again, we've been doing this for about six years and there's a lot of smoke. So we know there's fire. So the best news about all this is we understand how humans function under these systems. We'll be able to design, there'll still be a whole pharma route, but again, we'll be able to design natural products, CBD based products or cannabis based products that all go at the endocannabinoid system in a different way. And the best news about these products is that they're safe. They're safe. They're safe. There's no unintended consequences. All right, so thank you very much. I appreciate you bearing with me for a few minutes. Hopefully you've learned something. I really wanna teach you about this. So gosh, if you want to learn more, uh, come visit us at themasterregulatorysystem.com. There's a basic endocannabinoid class up there. Again, we're going to be building that class set more and more. There'll be classes for formulators. There'll be classes for physicians. Um, and there'll be other kind of specialized classes. We really want to build a class for retailers. Again, it's very hard to be able to get somebody to the right stuff unless you have some kind of template, right? So we want to build a template so retailers kind of understand how to help people. Um, if you want to see our science, come see us at newpharma.com. We do have patents around what we're doing, so don't commercialize it. I'll tell you what to do out of your spice cabinet to help yourself, but if you go build products around it, again, we have patents around it. And we do have a product line uh, that we're doing, and we uh, build something called Bioceuticals, but it's a crossover. It's, it's natural products, so it's plant-based products combined with CBDs. 
And again, you know, we know a lot about how to modulate the endocannabinoid system. And so we put this uh, practically into a, a product set. But anyway, that's all for today. Come see us. Thank you.